welcome back. Thanks so much for joining me. So this is a little, uh, very small update here, really to talk about and remind myself about what I did at a certain point in time. So uh, you don't need to watch this, to be perfectly honest with you. If you're not really interested in kind of the timeline that I'm building things in. Um, so we're at the end of October and I've ordered a number of points to finish off my hidden sidings. They haven't arrived. Um, I've been trawling the internet and trying to go to smaller independent model railway stores, stores, shops, stores. And yeah, I've um, really struggled. I ordered some um, from, well, actually I found some from one company. I emailed them, but they said they were sold out overnight. So maybe they didn't actually have them in stock anyway. Found another company called Footplate. They said they've got five, ordered three, got the confirmation of the order but had no dispatch, so that's, have they really got them? I'm waiting to see. And whilst I was kind of debating about what to do with them, I placed an order ages ago with Rails of Sheffield and with Hattons. Rails of Sheffield, suddenly I had a PayPal notification saying, you paid Rails of Sheffield for something. I thought, oh my God, what have I ordered? Uh, and it was some points. So they've got two of these uh, left-hand Electrofrog points that I'm waiting for, so hopefully they turn up next week. But I'm still gonna be short of a few, so I'm kind of hoping that Footplate will ship pretty quickly. And I really hope they've got them. I have to contact them on Monday to see what's going on because it's really frustrating. It's really frustrating. I did a load of stuff. It's been two, three weeks since I laid some of the track and now I've been now I've been waiting. Anyway, I cancelled. I had some of these uh, on order with Hattons. I had a few things in my trunk with Hatton store. So I got those shipped anyway. And the things I had in the store was, I think I mentioned about the couplers, decouplers, re-railers, whatever you want to call them. I ordered five of those from Hattons because I wanted the newest style, which has got <clears throat> the nickel silver um, track in there, so it won't rust in slightly cooler environments. <clears throat> I also ordered some set track. As you probably saw, when I laid this and I joined it, I had a bit of an issue. The main issue was when I laid them, <clears throat> a couple of fish plates uh, were, well one set of fish plates wasn't slid under, so I had to cut it up and rejoin it. Problem is with re-gluing it down, it was not perfectly straight. So I have ordered a set track, uh, track setter, which is straight. I've also ordered their kind of radius two equivalent set tracker as well, which is what I need to run um, a single line into the sidings. So they've all arrived, which is um, fantastic news. But I have also been playing around with um, some of the electronics just here. So I've been playing around with this stuff. So I'm just going to turn a couple of things on. My C bus, my booster, and my track. So what I've got here is I'm effectively running uh, this little device just down here, which is a DCC load detector. Um, so in theory, what should happen is when I connect up um, the positive side of this, like so, I've got a few of these actually. Um, it's basically feeding track and this is simulating a loco and whenever a loco hits, uh, you get your green indicator comes on just down there. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> this is a, these are all murky kits. So this is a Canmio running a certain type of firmware and I'm running it from a five volt supply. It comes in, comes out, goes to a feed. And if you can see over here, this, um, this LED simulates a control panel. So uh, as you can see, whenever a load is applied, um, you can see that uh, <coughs> the, the LED would come on. So I've also, I've had, have ordered a, um, I want to say Hodgin Granger, but I don't think it is, control panel. Um, and I've mimicked up or created a control panel schematic in Adobe InDesign. It seems quite straightforward to do. Um, now it's a little bit wider than I want it to be, and it will be running down the bottom end, so near the entrance. And the whole point of this would be using the DCC sort of, de sort of load detectors, <clears throat> I can work out when you've got um, a train on track kind of thing. I'm also going to be running 
so I managed to got to just do a quick bit of moving around <clears throat> because I unplugged that white one plug this one in this is the zero volts um, I'm using a deep want connectors here as well a little bit of fiddling to go so uh, the other thing I'm trying to do so I've also got this uh, little bit of a Heath Robinson thing just here this is um, effectively a Hall effect sensor. I think I might show. I can't remember if I showed it last time. The whole point of this is, when you put a uh, something with an LED uh, magnet on, uh, you should see that the the LEDs are changing over there. So um, there you go. Detected. Uh, oh, I lost a connection somewhere. Oh, there you go. So the, the whole point of that is as the points move from one side to the other. You have two hall effect sensors, uh, and when one comes that side, it's on that one, and when it moves to the other side, it would illuminate the other. I'm sort of simulating that at the moment, so you'd have uh, one on one side and one on the other. So as the servo moves the, I guess you call it a tie bar, from one side to the other, then the LEDs are indicated. Again, this is all kind of working towards having the control panel all in place. So I'm quite looking forward to to those bits and pieces. So that's predominantly what I've done. I've kind of created this little uh, device up as well because I need to run five volts to each of these and I need to run some kind of five volt from there. So the old point is take five volts out of this little circuit board into here. I have a plus and minus on each side, some little links across. So now I can take, um, the plus points over to each of the Hall effect sensors that I'm going to have in each area. Um, and I'm going to have a couple of little three pin jumpers, similar to these, but three pin versions, so that I can extend the length of this Hall sensor. So one of these will go to kind of this kind of type thing, come into the center, jump across a plus and minus. There's a capacitor and a resistor on this. That's basically the circuit as it sits. And uh, yeah, then I can run that up to the to the servo. And the idea behind that is the magnet would be glued on to sort of there and the whole sensor would be here. So as the tie bar comes across, it's detected and illuminates the relevant spot just there. So that is what I'm kind of looking to do. So that's all looking uh, relatively promising I I have to say and the only other thing that I have done is I will just show you I've gone and purchased myself a resin printer so the reason for this was to try to make some HST couplings that could be magnetized a bit like the hunt couplings but they've got those weird little couplings and some of those HST coaches, I don't even know what you call them, not NEM pocket connections, which is really annoying, there's something else. So I brought myself a printer because I kept on emailing a certain person to try to help me out and print them, which they did, um, but you know, it takes a while. So I've got one of these. Um, I have had a play with it. I've printed a couple of things. Um, this is uh, this is one of them. Maybe it's picking it up in the so uh, this is one thing that is picked up. Uh, I printed this to do with some cat scarers, um, but um, I measured it wrong and it's too loose. So I'd need to build another one. It's not a brilliant print, admittedly. Um, I'm, yeah, I'm not sure why it's not the best print, but uh, yeah, it's not. Um, but well, I think I know why. It's bloody cold. It's only about 10 degrees in the garage at the moment. And these things really want to operate sort of higher up nearer the 25 range so I don't think this is going to be much use unless I've got a way of heating it and I have <laughs> I have seen um, a few things where people put like a PTC heater in here uh, and just localize it and get it up to 25 degrees that is an option we will see we will see but that's the 
other thing that I've been killing time with, effectively, whilst waiting for my track to appear. So I'm going to sign off. So uh, again, thanks very much for watching. It was a little bit of a, um, a short video and, well, I guess that's the way it goes. There's not much going on until I get the control panel. I can build that out. I can start playing with those kind of things. I can get the points to put in here would be fantastic. And I can then finally get this kind of section going and I can lay the kind of radius two track just here. I'm kind of hoping radius two is going to be suitable for everything that I want to put in there. You know, leave me a comment. I mean, I've got a class 800 HSTs, some 37s with a kind of load of uh, EWS freight that go on the back of it. Is a class two. Should I go for radius three rather than radius two? You know, comment below, please. Uh, give me your feedback on that. That would be uh, appreciated. Anyway, thanks very much for watching. Uh, if you have enjoyed, then uh, please do uh, hit the subscribe. So I think the subscribe might be up here or it might be up there. It could be down here or down there. Um, I'm not very good when I watch these things back to realize what side it is. So when I watch the video, it's normally up on the right hand side. So I'm gonna say it's up here because this would be flipped. Could be up here. Anyway, thanks so much for watching. Uh, do hit the like button, hit the notification bell to uh, be notified of any other videos that I post. That would be uh, great. Thank you very much. Uh, keep yourself uh, safe in these uh, weird and wonderful times. So uh, goodbye from me for now. Hope to see you again soon. Bye.